somebody who was not a capitalist. This was somebody that really believed in like a whole poor people's movement. And um, I just thought we never talk about that. We only talk about the civil rights stuff. Again. And which not that that's not important, but I think we need to see this more as an economic situation. Your thoughts? Well, yeah. Well, Frank Chapman is the uh, man you're referring Chapman. to. Thank who you. was in uh, Chicago. And um, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, towards uh, the last couple of years of his life, the Civil Rights Act had been passed, the Voting Rights Act had been passed, and this major legislation had gotten done uh, as a result of the uh, mass movement. And he was thinking more about economic issues. He was talking about things that made people very uncomfortable. He was talking about segregation in the North. He was talking about segregation in Chicago, where he was attacked by a mob. And he said they were worse than a mob in Mississippi when he started talking about housing integration and school desegregation. Um, and uh, yes, the, uh, the Poor People's uh, uh, Campaign was uh, something that uh, he was, uh, was working on uh, very seriously towards the end of his life, speaking out against the war, speaking out against uh, militarism. And the military budget was a, a fraction of what it is uh, now, where it's 60% of all discretionary spending. So speaking of things that uh, he did not get to accomplish. So it's important for us to know the whole man uh, you know, if you read, uh, uh, if you watch the news on his birthday, you think he gave one speech, the I Have a Dream speech, <laughs> which actually was the least substantive of, of everything that he ever said, uh, without any mention of what he said about economic inequality, what he said about imperialism. Um, that is, we have to remember the whole man. It's, and there's no point in having uh, this King Day if we're going to cherry pick the things that can make people um, uh, the most comfortable now. Uh, he wasn't worried about making people uncomfortable. No. And he was, you know, a and he was, um, in general, very unpopular uh, at the end of his life. He was, of course, um, always loved in the Black community, but opinion polls showed him uh, with some uh, very high negatives because he had made uh, people uncomfortable. But uh, that's what we have to remember and that's what we all, if we're going to claim to respect him and honor him, have to do ourselves. Hats off to Bernie for putting out probably the best tweet today regarding his, you know, Dr. King's uh, day is the fact that he was assassinated in Memphis while marching with the Trash. strike with the striking sanitation the workers, workers who That's were right. being treated uh, abhorrently and. What, what's interesting, of course, is the fact that uh, there's always the virtue signalers who want to jump on there and basically trash Bernie for having that as his message, rather than like all the other things that people, I guess, like want to talk about. But the truth is, everything always comes back to economic justice for those who don't have any power. And that is the it is the great dividing issue of our time. Corporate special interests is what dominates our government everywhere. And if we're going to talk about Dr. King's message, we have to talk about the message that, like you said, seems to be ignored every single year. And if we're going to talk about what's really the crux of why he was killed, it's because he was trying to bring everybody in the working class together. And when that happens, uh, you know, well. He'd be well, fighting for all the labor stuff now. He was. He was. A, uh, the sanitation workers in uh uh, Memphis, as you said, were uh, very uh, poorly uh, paid, poorly treated. They had to, if, uh, if it was one of them, uh, the, the strike began when a man was crushed. He, he was sleeping in the truck. Um, and uh, this uh, anger had been building, and they asked Dr. King to come and uh, support their um their actions. And you know, a couple of days, he spent uh, several days in in Memphis. And um, uh, there was a near uh, riot, dare I use the word, uh, and he got negative press for that. King is uh, fomenting uh, um, uh, violence among uh, sanitation workers in, in Memphis. So, uh, but that is something very important. Uh, and he, he, you know, he gave his Vietnam speech literally a year to the day, April 4th, 1967. 
Uh, and that last year of his life was one that was very, very difficult for him because he, um, he made the wrong people uncomfortable. So Lyndon Johnson was very angry that he spoke against the Vietnam War. And actually, uh, the New York Times criticized him. Some of his own people said, let's not make Lyndon Johnson angry. He's helped us out. So you don't want to, you know, you don't want to piss him off. Um, and by, and you're absolutely right, when you start talking about opposing capitalism, these are things that make, uh, that make enemies. So, you know, to answer, uh, you, you haven't asked about it, but no, I don't, I don't trust the official story that this James Earl Ray guy, you know, who was a petty criminal who uh, never, he uh, never committed a crime that he wasn't arrested for within a few hours, that he decided to travel all over the country and track King and decide to shoot him. I, I you know, managed to have two passports and got to London. I, it was crazy. No, I don't believe that story. Yeah, um, King's family doesn't believe that story. No, no, of course they don't. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very happy that they, that they spoke what anybody with common sense already knew that this, uh, um, you know, this story uh, doesn't, doesn't hold water, doesn't make sense at all. They're very power, powerful people who wanted King dead, and um, they succeeded in, in uh, killing him um, at the moment when he began to uh, change his message to one that really threatened the system. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.